so our chapter was chapter eight, um, entitled And No Bird Sing from a Silent Spring by Rachel Carson and I'm Celeste. I'm Chelsea. And um, this chapter is much more than about birds, which is why we have these lovely leaves here on our PowerPoint. So we'll get to that in just a minute. So the first chapter basically tells you how um, there was a strange disappearance of local bird life, which was mostly like the robins there. And it was caused because um, scientists were spraying elm trees with a DDT pesticide, which was in turn like getting to the birds. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, Dutch Al they were spraying for Dutch elm disease because they were worried that it was being carried by beetles throughout these trees. And they, yeah, they wanted to kill the insects like the beetles and the worms. Um, that, but the birds were eating the worms and so it was getting into the bird systems. Basically, like, it was just a huge catalyst um, with the starter being Dutch elm disease, you know, being controlled by DDT, which just was this huge snowball effect, uh, killing and hurting a lot of the ecosystem. So in the photo of the tree, that's uh, Dutch elm disease from a physical point of view. The leaves are rotting, falling apart. The tree is just dying. And on the lower picture are um, some uh, eggs of birds that are have been affected by the DDT pesticides. Um, so it strongly influenced food webs. So like they sprayed the elm trees and then it got into like the worms since they were living in the soil. But the birds were eating the worms and so were raccoons, possums, and voles. And then also bald, like bald eagles were affected and in turn humans were affected because all kind of their surrounding nature was disappearing. Like there weren't many birds anymore. Somebody talked about how they used to look out their window and there were like so many birds and then there was only like one or two left. Um, the elms were dying despite the spraying by DDT. It wasn't working. Uh, people didn't understand. They just kept spraying. They just kept spraying. Because but the elms continued to die. Rachel states that in her book, um, between 1951 and 1956, Syracuse still lost nearly 3,000 elms. So this wasn't helping. This wasn't the solution. And it was affecting every single thing in the food chain. So present day, um, DDT is now banned because of all of its effects. And it's been banned since 1972. And there's still no cure for Dutch elm disease, but it is being treated. And it's being treated by injecting fungus killing bacteria into the tree and also um, injections to protect the healthy trees so they don't end up getting Dutch elm disease and the disease trees are usually removed from the locations and discarded. Um, yeah, so these issues really don't exist uh, like Rachel Carson was talking about in her book. They've pretty much been controlled and the birds are back. So um, yeah, it's definitely improved. Uh, case studies uh, for the Dutch elm disease, there are, there are many groups that are still working to control this disease because it's, it's still out there. Um, uh, no, no, there's no no, uh, no known cure, um, but the Elm Restoration Project by the Forestry Sciences Laboratory and the Northern Research Station, they're planting DED resistant trees. Um, basically, they're trees that have been treated, um, you know, genetically to be not immune but can withstand DED or Dutch elm disease. Um, so, do you want to talk about what Dutch elm disease actually, how it works? Um. So, okay, um, Dutch elm disease, um, like it is something, it's a disease that basically gets into the tree and it just makes them deteriorate. Yeah, it's carried by this little beetle that go that carries the disease on its back on spores, which then travel into trees, which is why this is such a hard thing to control and it's, you know, it's not easy. Um, but then we move on to the bald eagles. In 1963, there were fewer than 500 pairs. They were on America's most endangered species list for many, many years. Um, there was a case of a Florida man who uh, monitored bald eagles just for the fun of it. And he, as he would talk about the nest, and he would see how many eggs were in the nest. And then he slowly started to notice that there weren't as many bald eagles, there weren't as many nests. And even when there were nests, there were no eggs in them, or the eggs were dead. There was just, there was nothing in them. But now, since like D, um, 
since after like the treatment um, was since DDT spraying is now not allowed. There are more than five thousand pairs of so they were actually taken off the endangered species list um, not too long ago, and we're seeing them now in Pennsylvania, even down at the Allegheny River. You can see bald eagles. So they've resurged. Okay, and here is the video. This is a video just showing um, how they treat the trees. It's kind of neat. They just give them a vaccine with a huge needle like they do with people and vaccines. So. Well, this is the first time that we're actually going to be uh, using Thing you would do is you would check the tree for signs of old Dutch elm disease infections. Since we're dealing with a true vaccine here, we need to be sure that the elm tree we're about to vaccinate is still healthy and in good shape. If we get the vaccine out of the, cool, out, out of the cooler, we have to bring the vaccine which is stored in these vials to the site in the cooler because it's a living product. You have to keep it cool. And then we take the injection tool out of its case, which is this one. And in order to start the inoculation, you slide and click the vaccine into the inoculation tool. One inoculation has to be made every 10 centimeters in circumference of the tree at breast height. And the inoculation itself is nothing more than pushing the chisel through the bar, releasing one drop of vaccine, and twisting the gun slightly sideways just before it hits the bar, and you're done. And that's all it takes. So it will take you a minute or two to treat one such a tree before you can move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, the registration process for the vaccine is, is an ongoing process, but Health Canada has granted us a research authorization to do a trial on about 200 elm trees in the city of Winnipeg. The process uh, has been in use in the Netherlands since 1992 and in the United States since 1995, and this year, 2009, for the first time in Canada. So, this is that, so they're in Winnipeg doing that. So, uh, the places that we saw doing it in the uh, United States, planting those DED-resistant resist trees, includes Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. But they're treating Dutch elm disease all over the place. Wherever there's elms, they have to take precaution. So, okay. um, so opinions on the problems is that it was not treated properly and people attacked the beetle for carrying the disease instead of the fungus, which was the disease itself. And um, people like who were for DDT spraying didn't think of the consequences of all the animal life and the birds and everything before they poisoned our ecosystem. Um, and uh, the short-sighted solution, which was to just inject everything with DDT, that wasn't the answer. They had, they should have thought about it before the case, and other solutions should have been considered. Exactly, and people in the in Rachel Carson's book, people were talking about whether they want elms or whether they want birds, and they said in the long run, well, we want birds because you know there's other trees, but um, luckily we you know, kind of tackled both, and we can still have our elms, but, um, you know, also we're not impacting the other wildlife as well. Um, the solutions, uh, careful monitoring and treatment of Dutch elm disease. Uh, since this was the catalyst, this was really the root of the problem. Um, so uh, they need to manage this by uh, injecting fungus killing bacteria into the tree. This is the most common route, and this is the most practical route, uh, we think. Um, the injections not only help kill the disease, but they also protect the healthy trees. And um, Rachel Carson stated in the later end of this chapter that really the solution was much simpler than spraying with chemicals. All you had to do was take the infected parts of the tree or the whole tree itself and discard of it, burn it before the springtime, before the beetles can come out and transfer it. So it was really much simpler, and that's really what we do today to help manage this. And it's not hard, and it's 
um, pretty easy. And uh, another solution is to discuss and test all pesticides before in introducing them into nature, which is common sense. Um, we need to know the impacts of what we're putting into the environment, um, not just in terms of pesticides, but everything we do, because it all has this tumbling effect as we see how it affects the food web and uh, just the entire biodiversity. Any questions?